want to welcome you to our graduation ceremony today. Uh, my name is Danielle Rasson. I'm one of the teachers, and I'll be your MC for the day. Um, I like to talk a lot, which is why they put me here, but I'm also going to keep it brief. Um, as a teacher, I can't tell you how happy I am to see all of these students and all of our families here um, supporting each and every one of you. So um, if I can, ask our principal, Jeffrey Schmidt, to come on up and say a few words. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, I want to do this again. Good morning, everyone. There we go. That's good. Um, I just wanted to uh, keep this very brief. Um, one of the nice things that we do for our OA graduates that's different from most ceremonies is we actually speak about each of the students a little bit as they are coming up to get their diplomas. So uh, we try to keep our speeches short, uh, and I'm going to try to do that as well. Before I say anything, though, I'm hoping we can give a huge round of applause to all of the families who are here today supporting their students. And of course, a huge, huge round of applause for our OA graduates of 2023. Uh, I think what I will say briefly is that you know one of the one of the most special things about Opportunity Academy is we we really truly believe that every student is a different student. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, there's a lot of thoughts that folks have when they think of an alternative high school graduation. Folks might think, oh, these are students who have fallen behind. These are students who maybe took an easy way at the end. And I want to say that, as all of you in the audience know, that is absolutely not the truth. Uh, what is true about all of our students is that each of them is a very, very different and unique person uh, who required a different and unique path to graduation. I mean, just briefly, I'll, I'll summarize some of those different stories. On the stage, uh, we have some seniors who are graduating early because they had a post-secondary plan and they knew that with our competency-based model they could get done uh, a little earlier. We have some students who are graduating in their fifth or sixth year because of obstacles in their lives that, that caused them to need to take time off from school. Uh, we have some teen moms, including one teen mom at least I know who was up here today, uh, who finished her diploma remotely with a newborn child, and I'm told was actually like doing work at three in the morning after she would wake up to feed her child. Um, we have uh, students who graduated from our success center, uh, the majority of the students graduated from our success center. Um, of the 78 total Opportunity Academy graduates, of which there are 30 uh, here today, many of our students choose to walk uh, in, at the Gateway graduation, which is our dual enrollment program. So those are Opportunity Academy students who have earned college credits. Some of them are here as well today. Um, some choose to walk in the Holyoke High School North graduation, which I know many folks were there. It was an absolutely beautiful ceremony. Uh, or the Dean graduation, if they came to us from Dean. And some choose to walk in the Lighthouse graduation. And some, uh, the bold ones, choose to walk in multiple graduations and are here for us today. Um, but really, they could not have made it here without the folks who were in the audience. Um, so a very, very special thank you. Uh, to the families of our students who are incredible, incredible folks who support these students through their journeys to high school and their diploma and their post-secondary plans. Uh, a very special thank you, I really want to make sure I say this, to um, our staff, um, and especially an additional thank you to Danielle, who just spoke, Nicole, who's in the back in the pink dress there, and Anilo, who's in the green dress. They work countless hours beyond the regular hours during the months of May and June to make sure that this graduation happens and is very special um, and has all of the special moments that the students who are on this stage deserve. These are the most incredible students in Holyoke. I truly believe that. Um, and I'm really, really glad that you are all here to celebrate with us. So you have the opportunity to hear from a number of our graduates today. I gotta get out all the notes. And our first student speaker, um, and I just went on an overnight trip where she presented um, some classwork that she did to a number of educators across the Northeast. 
Um, so it was fantastic to watch her and share that experience with her. So Nisaya, will you please come say a few words? Um, hi, many of you guys know me, some of you don't. I'm Nisaya. I started off here as an adult student, but thanks to the lovely support from the teachers in this room, I now stand beside all of these wonderful graduates as a high school graduate and the first one in my family as well. But that's enough about me. <laughs> my focus is towards the graduates. Today marks the day that you guys finally did it. You guys finally all graduated high school. Many of you worked your butts off and worked really hard and all of your families here are very proud of you. My only advice, now that it's over, what happens is totally up to you guys. It is your decision what happens next. And now I know that sounds like scary, sounds terrifying, but I can say without a doubt, if you ever wanna come back, I'm sure the teachers will love you with open arms. Mine is Jerry making fun of you for coming back like you did to me. But <laughs> that's all that you guys need to really think about. And what you guys are gonna eat at this banquet after because I'm sure we're all hungry. <laughs> yeah. So congratulations class of 2023. You guys finally did it and give your guys a round of applause. Messiah failed to mention she now works for the Holyoke Public Schools at Donahue as a prepare professional. So, we've already turned her into one of our own. <laughs> um, this next speaker came to last year's graduation because she had a very special loved one graduate. And she said, I'm going to stand on that stage and I'm going to speak next year. And she said it to multiple staff members and spoke that into existence. So Kiara, will you come and speak for us, please? Hi, everyone. My name is Kiara. I'm a little nervous, so if I stutter, please don't mind me. Anywho, good morning, friends, family, teachers, and graduates. I'd like to thank everyone for coming here today to class to celebrate the class of 2023 graduates. So give a round of applause, please, thank you. I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of us here have struggled today and like personally, I did too. So like during my high school years, at first I started off in Holyoke High. I was a freshman and I have friends, my social life was good and I'm not gonna lie. It was full of drama, <laughs> it really was. So like, I was always getting caught up in someone else's mess, someone else's business, someone else's life, honestly. And academically, I honestly wasn't doing so good. I was at the point where I was gonna fail my freshman year and my mom over there does not play. She's Puerto Rican, so please, <laughs> she does not know. So like, doing online was pretty hard for me, but I tried my best to still be on track, but it like wasn't giving enough. So I was falling behind in all of my classes and I was so close to the point where I was just gonna give up and fail, honestly. So it had to come to a decision that that school was just not working for me. Like it was just not it for me. And that's exactly where OA comes in. So being in OA helped me so much academically and personally. I found exactly what I was looking for here. I'd like to shout out a couple of people that really helped me find my way to graduate. So to start off, I'd like to shout out my girlfriend. If you want to stand up real quick, say a little hi, you know, give a little dance if you want to do it. Yeah, show my teddy bear, go ahead. <laughs> so I'll be honest, that girl does not play. She was on my case for months. Like She was like, get to school, do your work, get to school. She be doing too much, like, you know, but like, to be honest, she encouraged me to just be me. I'm a perfectionist, so honestly, I need everything in my life to go perfect, like every single little thing. Like, I'm just a perfectionist, but when it comes to her, she makes it known that being imperfection, like being an imperfectionist is okay. Like, you know, like you can be imperfect and 
You can just leave your own um, person to sign with who you would just are. So the second person is my mom. She's sitting over there. If you want to stand up, throw me a little kiss. Yup, love you. <laughs> so actually, a lot of the time, I'm stubborn. Like, I want everything to go my way, exactly the way it is. Like, if it's not my way, it's no way. Like, it's my way or the highway. So, you know? But she gives me a lot of tough love, and, like, it's needed. Like, you know, like, it's needed for a mother to love you and to give you that tough love. And, that's exactly what she does, and it took her a lot to raise me, so if you want to give my mom a round of applause for raising me, thank you, yup, I love you. So, Nicole, where you at? Nicole, I don't, oh, I love you, hey! <laughs> so, Nicole over there, she um, has taught me a lot, honestly. She taught my mother when she went to OA and she got her GED there, so I automatically wanted her. Like, that was just a set for me. Like, I wanted Nicole. So, she did everything in her power to get me to where I needed, and all of my classes that were assigned to me was because of her. Like, she did everything in her power to make sure I got there, and I gotta appreciate her for that. So, like, I love you. Thank you for everything you've done for me, and I appreciate you so much. Thank you. I'm almost done, you know, give me a little break, but last but not least, Chris, where you at? There you are, you back there with the red shirt, yup. So that's Maui right there for all of you people that know Chris, it's Maui, he's the great Maui. Yo, give him a round of applause, Maui, go ahead. So he has given me advice from personal life to what I can do in math to what I can do in ELA, like he has done everything for me like and it's not just academically like you've done everything personally for me like you've given me advice from anything with anything to be honest not bad <laughs> so to be honest like i love you and like you play a big role in my life like you know so like i'm gonna always come back to see you you're gonna see me when i'm in my 25 years old you know in my 20s like hey what you doing so i'm gonna come and visit you i'm gonna be honest so you better be ready for me <laughs> so I'm not really a hugger, to be honest, but from Chris, I'll take a bear hug. I love some bear hugs from Chris. He'd be a little, little bear. <laughs> Ooh, he'll be all right. Um, we don't have many teachers like these. We definitely need more. All of the teachers here play a big role in our lives. Some are role models, some are families, some turn out to be someone that we really look highly up to. And I have to thank all of the teachers here for pulling up with all of the crazy that this class be giving them because honestly this class is a whole lot of crazy. So you gotta give them a round of applause. Please and thank you. So people that don't understand OA say that OA isn't part of Holyoke High or that we're the outcast or whatever you wanna call it. But like, I'm gonna be honest with you, this school is the best part of being an hours class as you can get. So like, I've got to thank you for doing everything possible to make OA as great as it can be. And you guys really did that, so thank you. And everyone that graduated from OA will be the best part of their class. And I can attest to that. Everyone here can attest to that. And OA will never go unnoticed, and I can promise you that. So thank you, and congratulations, class of 2023, and it's only up from here, baby, so give it up. Thank you, Kiara. And our last student speaker is a gentleman who worked most of the school year and would pop in every now and again to get work done. Um, but it's truly a joy and someone that everyone smiles when they see. So Tete, will you come up please? Bravo. Este, en lo largo de estos meses, en el Oportunidad Academy, En algunas ocasiones tuve mucha falta, ausencia por responsabilidades familiares y económicas en donde me tocó trabajar para poder pagar las deudas o cosas materiales necesarias. Aún así, tuve fe de que podía obtener mi diploma. 
y aquí estoy diciendo lo logré. Gracias a las motivaciones de los maestros. Gracias a las motivaciones de los maestros y todos los participantes del SUSE Center, pude dar un paso más y hacer sentir a mi mamá orgullosa por este logro. Mamá, gracias por regañarme y ser consistente a que yo terminara mis estudios, porque si no hubiera sido por ti, tal vez yo no pudiera estar aquí presente. Te amo, mamá. Pero también tengo algo para mis compañeros. El ser humano ha llegado bastante lejos y nosotros, sin embargo, no deberíamos de dejar de percibir las cosas de la manera idílica. Debemos de tener toda la sensatez y el conocimiento de que siempre debemos de ser quienes nosotros somos y jamás aparentar algo que nosotros no somos. Porque nosotros nunca sabemos a quién podamos inspirar con ser nosotros mismos. Así que llenándonos de coraje, fuerza, y muchísimo valor podemos alcanzar todas y cada una de las metas a las que nos propongamos. Por eso yo le pido a los jóvenes que trabajen y estudien por sus sueños, porque al igual que los niños, nosotros también somos el futuro del mundo. Gracias. I would like to now ask our superintendent of schools, Anthony Soto, to come on up and say a few words for us, please. Wepa! <laughs> I gotta follow that. That was amazing. Good job. Thank you. So good, in, uh, good, good morning. Um, on behalf of the Holyoke School Committee and the entire Holyoke community, I want everyone to just congratulate all of our graduates here. I think there's just over 30 of them here, but 78 of them that had graduated. So I want to wish you all a congratulations. It's an honor to be here. I'm Anthony Soto. I also graduated from uh, Holyoke Public Schools and I'm the superintendent here in Holyoke. And uh, I really want to thank all of the families that are here today to celebrate your, your children and, and them getting to this milestone in their life um, and supporting them on this special day. Le quiero darle la gracia a toda la familia que están aquí apoyando a nuestros estudiantes en este día especial. And to our graduates, wow, this is, this is a little strange because I want to talk to you. Normally you. You're, you're there and I could just do that, but I'm going to have to turn around a little bit. Um, I just want you all to be really proud of what you have accomplished. Um, this isn't the end. This is just a step to where you want to be. But you have to stop and smell the flowers once in a while. And this is a day where you should be really, really proud of what you've accomplished. Um, the mayor, later on in his speech, um, he talks about what it means to grow up in Holyoke and the type of education that you get in Holyoke. It's more than just academics. You know, you get a lesson outside of our school walls of what it takes to persevere through challenges. And that's what every single one of you have done. You have persevered through challenges. Um, many of your friends aren't sitting on this stage today uh, because they couldn't persevere through those challenges like you did. You know, I'm sure you, you can name a few of them that were friends with you in freshman year and they're not here today uh, because they, they didn't dedicate themselves and push through all the challenges like you did. So, that is something that you should be really proud of. The other thing I want to mention is that I was in your seat a long, long time ago, and I remember feeling nervous, you know, uh, not knowing what was next, but I want you to know that those feelings are really normal. It's okay to feel that way. But I also want you to tell yourself 
I got this. I'm ready. I'm prepared. Whatever it is that you want to do in life, you're ready to do it. Um, there's a few things that I always tell our graduates. I'll keep it to just three. And the first thing that I want to say is that life is hard. And uh, you all know that. We all know that. Everybody in the audience knows that. Don't think it's going to get easier. The Duke women's basketball coach shared a message with her players. And the message is that we all wait around for things to get easy, right? If I just graduate high school and I get a job, it's going to get easier. If I get make more money, it's going to be easier. And her message to the players was, it never gets easier. It gets harder, and it gets harder, and it gets harder. But what happens is, is that you get better at dealing with harder. You get better at it. So when something is hard, learn how to deal with it. Something harder comes along, you get better at dealing with hard. So be that person that embraces hard things and pushes through it because you're gonna be better off in life. The other thing, The other thing that I wanted to say is that not always is it going to go according to plan, right? Plans don't always come to fruition. But you have already proven that you push through adversity. Um, and I want to quote Mike Tyson, one of my favorite boxers. Um, he was, he, uh, there was a guy that he was going to fight, was talking a lot of crap before the fight. Um, and said he got a really good game plan uh, for how he was going to defeat Mike Tyson. And then Mike Tyson knocked him out in like 30 seconds. And after the fight, they interviewed Mike Tyson. And they said, Mike Tyson, what happened? Um, this kid had a plan. He's, he had a plan that he was going to, you know, he was going to knock you out. And Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until I punch him in the face. I say that to you because that's what life does. It punches you in the face often. And sometimes it's not going to go according to plan. And you got to recognize that, realize that, and pick yourself up and punch back, bob and weave, and just push through everything that life throws at you. Like Michael Jordan, when he, you know, I'm going to quote the infamous Michael Jordan when he uh, got cut from his sophomore year in high school and then became the greatest basketball player. He didn't give up. Our own mayor, for example, he lost an election seven or eight years ago. And personally speaking, you know, he, he told me that was one of the worst days of his life because there were other things going on as well in his life at the time. But that was a really, really low point for him when he ran for treasurer and he didn't get elected. But he didn't quit. He picked himself up, he went out, he ran another town, not as good as Holyoke, but he ran another town and he just got better at his craft and he never gave up and he's sitting here seven years later addressing you as the mayor of Holyoke and that's awesome. So I say that because you two are going to fail, you two are going to make mistakes, get used to it and learn how to deal with those mistakes, pick yourself up, and, and take them as opportunities to learn and grow. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about is about choices. No choices are more important than the ones you're gonna make in the next few years of your life. Because it's so much harder to come back from bad choices when you're older, like me, than it is when you're younger. So, please, think about every important choice you have to make and know that you're in control and that it's gonna have an impact on your future. And one of the most important choices you're gonna have to make, um, and one of our speakers spoke about it, getting involved in other people's drama in freshman year. My mom used to tell me, dime con quien tu anda y te diré tu futuro. O te diré quien eres. Um, and that translates to tell me who you're, who you're hanging with and I'll tell you your future. And I still, to this day, have to evaluate who I surround myself with, who I'm listening to, who I'm friends with. 
it's such a valuable lesson and like it's so overlooked but you really gotta pick and choose your friends wisely because they're gonna help shape who you are as an adult and help you push through life. That's enough advice for me. I just wanna say congratulations. I'm proud of every single one of you and you should all be proud of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mayor Garcia, will you please come up? What's up, everybody? Incredible speech from our Hoyo Superintendent, Anthony Soto. It, you heard, he said, his mother tells him, tell me who you hang with and I'll tell you what your future will be. My mother used to tell me, Bucame la chancleta. <laughs> it was bottom line. And he failed to tell you also about his own personal story and understand that Anthony Soto and I we're two Holyoke kids that went to the public school system that grew up downtown Holyoke. He applied to be the chief financial officer of the school district about a decade ago? 2011. And the superintendent at the time, I guess pretty much in other words, saying, you're, no, too, you're too young. And he didn't give up, he came back, he got, he became the CFO, but not only the CFO, he's now running the school district, the city of Holyoke. So. Shout out to Anthony Soto. I do want to convey my greetings and appreciation to all the teachers, administrators, and staff of the Opportunity Academy. These folks are the unsung heroes, and I so much appreciate from the bottom of my heart their dedication to our kids of our Hoyo community. And let me also extend a heartfelt welcome to all of the proud parents, the grandparents, the families, the friends of the class of 23, and just so the folks behind me know that your parents and families are extremely, extremely proud of you, which means that today is a perfect day, if you haven't already, to ask them for money. <laughs> I want everybody to know how much I love this program. I love what this program does. I love the concept and its non-traditional method. This program represents Hoyo. It's such a Hoyo thing to do. I love it because Hoyo, for all the families that are in here that grew up in the city, knows that this is a city of opportunity. This is a city of second chances, of third chances, and fourth chances, and fifth chances and so on until we get it right. I love this program because it's about compassion, and that's Hoyo. And for the kids behind me, you've gained so much knowledge and experience and compassion, not just by the education you received within the school district or through this program, but just by simply growing up in this city. And I'm telling you that from my own experience, having been born and raised and grew up in South Holyoke and went to the public school system and now serving as your mayor. And because you've grown up here, you've learned about people's struggles. You've learned about poverty and addiction, mental health and homelessness. And many of you have your own stories to tell of the struggles that are happening in your own homes or maybe in your neighborhood. You've had an education and compassion what makes you so much more prepared than any of your peers and any of the surrounding communities. And because you've grown up in Holyoke, you know about different cultures, different religions, and different food, different holidays. Even if you've never been farther than the city of Chicopee, you're already well-traveled and much more prepared than our friends that are graduating from Chicopee. Many of you are bilingual. Did you know that only 6.5% of Americans born in this country speak a second language? You speak two languages and you're already ahead. 
You're going to earn more. You're going to learn more. You have more empathy. You're more open-minded, which is why I can stand up here and confidently say your education in Hoya puts you much farther ahead of those in other cities and towns. And don't let anyone tell you any different, because if they do, they just hate you. They're being haters. And whatever you decide to do, even if some of you decide to go out and explore the world, I'll always know that Hoyo will always be your home. This is where you were made, where your stories began. Your Hoyokers, I don't I want you to never forget that. So best of luck in your journeys. Go out there and show them who you are, what you can do, and be proud of telling them and the rest of the world where you came from. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, we are going to get to the best part of our ceremony. So you noticed our students walked in and they're sitting here on stage because unlike at a traditional high school, you get to know your students in a different way um, at OA. And we like to personally say something about each graduate. Um, and I've got everything all set up for everyone. But before we do that, we have a few graduates who couldn't make it today. Um, as you know, we are a high school diploma program, but we also serve adult students getting their high school equivalency. So I'm going to ask the heart of adult basic education, Ms. Winona Dobbs, to come up. So she can brag about five graduates that we had this year um, who are not here. So it, Winona is our ABE coordinator and advisor, all things adult education. Hi, Winona. Congratulations on you guys. Thank you. And, you. and people <laughs> and everybody thank over there. Thank you, thank you. Goodness gracious, look at those wonderful people out there. I do not have a, pe a speech prepared because I'm going to speak to you from my heart, as she just said. The other part of the alternative school is the adult basic education part of the program. Does anybody in here know what A-B-E stands for? Raise your hand. <laughs> adult basic education. It is for those people who did not get their high school diplomas. So none of you can come to the ABE program because you've done it already. Woo! So I heard there is someone in the audience that got their GED and I have been with this program for 14 years and I want to see you afterward, okay? Congratulations. Our five people that got their uh, high sets this year, which stands for High School Equivalency Diploma, they're all working, they all went the alternate way and we are very proud of them. And I have to read their names or I'll forget who they were. We have Jade Venkis who got her diploma last July, but was unable to be with us today. We have Maybelline Figueroa. Woo! All she needed was one more test, and it's that wonderful test that everybody hates called math. She did it, she got her diploma. Our next person is Ray D. Santana. His story is that, well, he had to leave school. He had children. He had to get those children raised. And he has decided he will become a police officer in Chicopee. Uh, <laughs> Our next 
graduate is Willow Farber. And her story is that she lives out in the middle of nowhere, got her diploma from Greenfield Community College, and is now a student there. And last but not least is Burke Atmaka. He is a chef at a local, uh, I don't know what they are, but he's a chef, and he got his diploma in October, but could not be here today. In <laughs> In addition to those five who have gotten their diplomas, there are 24 who have taken tests, haven't passed them all. We have four that only need one more test, and we have three that only need two more tests. I am proud of these adults who have gone a tough way that this group, in their own way, have gone a tough road but they will not have to get the high school equivalency diploma because they have the real thing, even though these high set diplomas are also real things. So my congratulations to all my adults and to all of these wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> In case you're wondering, Melvin's ready. Melvin is ready. <laughs> um, Amanda, could you make your way this way? You don't have to run. We're still waiting for the baby. <laughs> So I have the pleasure of announcing our first graduate, and that is Kivalise. She definitely made her mark. Uh, watching her graduate at, at such a young age, because she's a little younger than most, um, was such a pleasure. She's amazing. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> um, so I just want to congratulate her on her accomplishments and working very hard in such a short amount of time. And I'm really excited to see where she goes from here. Brian, can you come up? become like a son to me. Um, we have a primary person model here at OA where we kind of have a crew of students who work with us throughout the year. And Yariel started off really, really strong with us. And uh, then he went on a bit of a vacation for a while. And, uh, but he wrote a narrative in December and I refer to it as the plan. Uh, he spoke of, of his early school career, and not being the best student he possibly could. Uh, a short time later, he had a, his first son, and that changed his outlook and perceptive on, on not only school, but life. And I saw more growth in the last 60 days than, than I've seen in, um, you know, in quite some time in the classroom. So I, I couldn't be more proud. I, I, I love you, man, and I, I, I think the world of you. Next 
student is Emmanuel Rodriguez. Manny. Manny's got that thousand watt smile. He really does. And uh, so he's someone who joined us a little later in the year. Uh, and we shared a narrative class together. And it was one of my, my very favorites. But Manny's one of the toughest workers I know. Um, when he's not at school, he's working. And he told me, and he couldn't be more serious, he said, you know, when I make it, I'm coming back, and I'm gonna give you 5K. And he, he couldn't have been more serious, and I thought, man, I, I think he really needs it. And Angela heard him say that, she said, where, where, where's my money? So, so he's, yeah, that's what he said, he's got her too. So, man, he couldn't be more proud. secondary advisor at the Opportunity Academy and I will be presenting um, diploma to two students. Um, the first student is Shamalis. Um, I, 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 met, I met Shamalis in, um, in one of my life after OA fall classes. Um, <laughs> um, she was shy and spoke very little um, and as she completed her career exploration assessments and the time came to discuss them, um, I started to le learn how confident and determined she was about her plans for the future. Shortly after, Shamalis became one of our first graduates when she completed her, uh, her requirements in February. This, <laughs> this quiet young woman surprised me. She inspired me to keep supporting her dream of becoming a hairstylist. Uh, you may have heard the phrase, it takes a village, when referring to what it takes to bring children and adolescents to this phase of their lives. In the case of Shamalis, in addition to the OA team, one other person helped us get her in the pathway to a career of cosmetology, and that is her mom. <laughs> Today we celebrate Shamalis and her mom for their perseverance in moving forward with whatever steps were necessary to help Shamalis achieve her dreams. I am proud to say that she has applied to the Degree Gully School of Cosmetology with the hopes to start in the fall. Congratulations, Shamalis. And the second student is um, Jose Pizarro. Um, but I'm sorry, I just I wrote what I was gonna say for for the students. So today was my first advisee. Uh, when we met last August, uh, we connected right away. How could you not? He is charismatic and the type of person that will bring sunshine to the cloudiest day. Soon we started to talk about his career aspirations. Tete loves geography and world cultures. He wants to become a high school history teacher and return to Puerto Rico to become, to work as an educator. Um, in order for Tete to get to this point and accomplish his goals of graduating today, he had to work really hard at balancing school, school and his family and work responsibilities. His dedication to his family 
and commitment to provide for them was such that Tete held up to three jobs at one time. Woo! So to complete his, his graduation requirements, he had to do school in a very tight schedule. While he was calm and confident that this could be done, I was anxious about this plan. But he was very determined and eager to graduate today, and I, and I, along with my colleagues, followed his drive and supported him through every step of this process. To have finished his requirements on Monday. He did it. And we are beyond proud of this accomplishment. He stuck to his goal, kept his faith, and we will continue to support him as he moves on to the next chapter of his life. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right. Um, Chris. Oh, I have his notes too. He said don't embarrass him, but I will. Good morning, everybody. Our, so I have the pleasure to talk about five of the students here uh, that graduated this year. I'm really excited about it. What do we got first? First student is Zaid Guadalupe. So Zaid started with OA during the remote year. Come on now. Come on. So Zaid started with OA during the remote year, but didn't find much success, which ended that chapter with a dropout. After last year's graduation, his peers um, that graduated, what happened? I got you, baby, come on now, this is good. Right? So the, the students that graduated brought him back into the building to make another attempt. During this time, he transitioned to Gateway through OA, and although capable of doing the work, found that it wasn't the, the greatest fit for him. Zaid is more of a work at your own pace kind of student rather than sitting in the classroom, even though he can. All that being said, moving at his own pace, um, independent learning and finding what worked for him is what helped him get over the finish line. Zaid, AKA Bruce Leroy with the tank top. This is yours, baby. Right. Krista Morales, where you at? <laughs> all right. This is one of my all-time favorites. A fighter inside the ring and out has demonstrated the ability to accomplish many things during his time here at OA. Not only um, does he graduate today, but mo re most recently a champion in his boxing division. Yeah. Proud. proud business owner, um, and flat out an amazing student. Many long conversations with Christian and his mother throughout his time here at OA have built a strong relationship, one that I could lean on when Christian found himself lacking the motivation to finish strong. Thank you, Zuleka. <laughs> Christian Morales. Right, Mr. Pedro Leon. <laughs> Working with this student and family has been an amazing experience. It's okay, it's okay, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Upon starting with OA, uh, he had not engaged in school in some time due to various reasons, but when he toured the Success Center, you could see a glow that was only gonna get brighter. Holding down a job at a nursing home and still making time for school while balancing the everyday tasks of life was an amazing journey to watch you navigate. I know the journey wasn't easy, but building a solid relationship and always knowing that you would return my calls when you didn't answer showed me the communication skills that you have gotten that have gotten you this far. Keep up the good work. I'm proud of you.
Luis Rodriguez. This student holds a special place in my heart. Quiet, reserved, and very respectful. Watching you make progress, building relationships with staff, and opening up was an amazing journey to watch. Learning about some of your passions through the classwork you participated in helped us get a better understanding of who you are. Working with your mom on a consistent basis, especially when you lost motivation, was also a great way to help you get back on track. Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> Lewis, I'm very proud of you. I'm looking forward to hearing about what comes next. Congratulations, my man. And last but not least, Mr. Jacoby White. <laughs> Jacoby came to OA in late October with a little over 20 credits remaining, but wasn't finding the success he was looking for at the traditional campus. Holding down a job and still making room to get some schoolwork completed is what our program is about. In under a year, I've built a relationship with a student who I'm extremely proud of. You should be proud of yourself as well. Jacoby? Thank you, everybody. It's my turn. Um, I'd like to call Abdiel up here, please. Abdiel. Some of our students are receiving their diplomas today, so you're getting your diploma today. Um, but Abdiel is a student who could sneak in and out of a classroom very quickly and quietly. Um, sometimes he enjoyed a telenovela or two at school. <laughs> and in January, we met with mom and we said, listen, I don't know, it's possible, but I just don't know. And there was a change in Abdiel when we had that meeting. And he decided, I'm going to do this. And I'd go check in on him in the computer lab and see what he was working on. And every single day, he was a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And so I'm so proud of you and so happy to see you here on the stage. Um, this next student is also receiving his diploma today. Tyon, will you join me? Tyon asked me to keep this short, um, but I won't because <laughs> I won't. Um, Tyon was my primary student all year. And at the beginning of the year, it was like the NBA draft. We were picking kids, and I was like, I'll take McNuckles. I'll take him, no problem. And for the first two weeks of knowing Ty, every time I asked him to do something, he sort of mumbled under his breath some things, and I was like, okay, if you try, Ty, that would be great, <laughs> you know? Um, and I got to know his mom, Monique. Monique, will you stand for us? Come on, Mom. Um, two things in our conversation stood out. She told me, one, my son is made for more. She told me that he has the ability to do more and that this diploma is essential for him. So for you to have someone in your corner, Ty, that is your ride or die, right, and going to be there for you is amazing. And number two, she said, my baby is walking across that stage. I don't care what he wants, what he says, he's doing it. And so, um, Ty didn't pass his math MCAS in November, and we weren't sure if he was going to get a full diploma. And he worked really hard on that retest and um, is receiving his full diploma today. <laughs> and I probably said too much, but that's okay. He'll rumble a little bit later. <laughs> Um, and my third student today is Jack. 
Jack, can you join me? When Jack came in for his intake meeting, he rapped for Chris. And so if you have the privilege of hearing Jack, um, he's amazing. Uh, Jack was with us for a short period of time and he just needed some ELA credits. And that personal narrative was a little difficult because he didn't want to tell me much about the beach and maybe dying or not dying, and this is too much information to be sharing with you all. <laughs> but um, we're so glad to have had you this year, Jack, and this is a certificate to honor you. Arthur, where are you at? Arthur. Uh, Arthur Lundrigan, everyone. Um, so Arthur uh, was, came to us last year uh, from Dean, and he was an incredibly social young man. He has more friends than I have had in my entire life. He had them already at OA when he landed there. I'm like, you just got here the first day. How do you know everybody? Um, but that's just the kind of person that Arthur is. Um, and remarkably, and this really is remarkable for teenagers, as most people here know, he's able to balance being an extremely social person with taking care of his responsibilities. And that is really, really hard to do, as the mayor and Superintendent Soto alluded to. You choose your friends carefully, he chose his carefully, um, and he worked incredibly hard throughout last year to be able to finish up a little early this year. Um, and I'm really, really proud of you, Arthur, because it's not just about um, the academics that you manage, but it's about the leadership that you've shown at the school, and you are a wonderful and incredible young man, I'm really proud of you. Congratulations. <laughs> Amanda Rivera, are you here? Amanda? Come on up. So, I love these stories because Amanda uh, is like one of those very unique outliers for Opportunity Academy in that she had, how many credits did you have remaining when you came over to us? Do you remember? It was like five credits or something like that. She just had a very small um, chunk of credits that she had to take care of and was not passing currently the class that she was enrolled in um, to be able to do that in her current situation. So she came to us and it was like the blink of an eye. It was like two days or something like that before she finished up the credit recovery that she needed to complete and be done. And Amanda, if you show that dedication in everything you do moving forward and you're that efficient in your task work, you are going to do incredible things in this world. And I'm proud of you. Pabo! So Angel David Pabon, full name there. Um, Angel is my, he's my prom buddy. We hung out a lot together at the prom, uh, and he was the sharpest, second sharpest dressed guy there after myself. Um, Angel is also an incredible wrestler, uh, like state champion level wrestler. Um, he he's shy about it, but he is incredible. So he and uh, Macho are gonna have to have some kind of a like boxing wrestling match off. At some point. Um, but he's also just an incredibly wonderful and kind and caring young man uh, who a lot of students who come to us earn their credits through a combination of credit recovery and project-based learning. Angel earned the vast majority of his through project-based learning and some like really difficult projects at that, including a spreadsheet that like helps you purchase cars that the one that Angel did I honestly used when I purchased my own vehicle. Like he is an incredibly smart uh, young man who worked incredibly hard on top of his many talents. Angel, I'm very proud of you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you.
knows his place in the alphabet. So. There you are, my friend. All right. Woo! Woo! Thank you, thank you. So anyways, thank, you, thank everyone for coming in. Um, the first student I, I have up here, um, it's uh, very special to me because, um, you know, he's, this is all foreign to him, uh, quite literally, actually. Um, so my speech uh, to him is gonna be in Spanish uh, because that's, his family doesn't speak a lot of English. Um, so Jose, Jose Duarte. Este, su arduo trabajo y perseverancia debe ser aplaudido y, y debe estar muy orgulloso de sí mismo por alcanzar este logro monumental. Todo lo mejor para su futuro, saludable y prospero donde sea que te lleve tu carrera. Muchas felicidades y mejores deseos en tu futuro. Felicidades, felicidades. Yo, Lisha. Tati, Tati, Tati. All right. So this particular student, um, I'll get right into it. Right? There's not enough I can say about her. I'm super proud that she's up here on this stage celebrating her graduation and moving on to the next phase of life. <laughs> I've been kicking her out of my office and sending her to class for three years now. <laughs> and I'm really, really happy that I don't have to do that anymore. But on a serious note, I'm super, super proud of her. Um, <laughs> I'm super, super proud of her. And, um, you know, on a serious note, um, you know, I've told you this the other days, the world is yours. I know you'll go on to do great things. Congratulations. All right? <laughs> look at that, look at that. Luckily for you guys, that's all I got. So thank you guys. Jess? We're at J, we go to S, so we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Everything is right here for you. Hi, everyone. Woo. Okay, my first student is Zachary Soto. When, Zach, when Zach first started at OA this year, we had a lot of talks about um, how hard it was to wrestle his brain into focusing in the classroom. Oh, dude. And uh, he was like, I really don't feel like school is for me. But then he started building relationships at OA, and I saw him reaching out to his brothers. He's the youngest of a crew of five brothers. The last graduate out of five brothers. Shout out to his brother. And I watched him repeatedly reach out to his brothers for support, and his grandmother, and his mother. And he has a, a real crew that is crossing the finish line with him. And I just couldn't be more proud of Zach. And I have to say, that Zach, I have known him since he was probably six or seven years old. And so this is like a very special moment for me also to see him Woo! achieve this amazing accomplishment. So congratulations. This is your This is nerve wracking, you guys. Okay. My next, next person is Mantis Podmore. So what I want to say about Mantis is that Mantis is a person who 
is going to create life and is like an artist of life and is not going to fit inside any of your boxes or any you know predetermined path. Mantis is carving their own path and is doing a phenomenal job at it. And it hasn't been easy to stay true to yourself, Mantis, and you did it. And so this is just an, the end of a, a very up and down journey to get here and to stick with school and achieving credits. And they did it, and here we are. So congratulations. <laughs> And last but not least, where's Melvin? the room um, and no matter what he has been through which has been a lot um, he continues to show up for people keep a smile on his face and keep going forward I, I, mean, I cannot say enough about how impressive he is he's been in and out of the state he got his CDL license he worked in a, a, as a driver yeah yeah and he, yeah, and um, he's just gone through many, many losses, and he has continued. Even when he's out of state, he stayed in touch. He kept plugging along, and I feel like I am so excited to see where he goes in his adult life because this guy knows how to persist. He is resilient to the fullest. So beautiful. <laughs> Jill, we're ready for you. Good morning. Good afternoon. I have the pleasure of giving diplomas to four wonderful young women. The first one I'm going to call up is Finn. Finn is an overcomer and a fashionista. Finn was able to put her individual flair into every single assignment and conversation we had. Finn fits our OA motto, proudly alternative to a T. Finn was meant for OA. She tailored and carved her own path to completion at OA. Even, you know, she would tell me she would show up for field trips and never came to a single one. But when it was time for Finn to be there, she was there. <laughs> we were able to collaborate, plan, and build community partnerships because of Finn's interests. So Finn did an internship at Artery, the local art gallery that sells local, the work of local artists. Finn is I think going to continue going to Artery. It's a great partnership and connection. Um, and Finn was able to use her own creativity and just put her stamp on the Holyoke community. Finn, we're going to miss you, but we are so, so proud of you. you. Congratulations. <laughs> Brianna. Brianna has the, 
Brianna has the brightest smile of any student I have ever worked with. She is the exemplar creator. She, if you, yeah, she is, creates exemplary work is what that means. Brianna <laughs> set the bar high in every single class she took. And then yeah, when she had the baby, she's the one who was up until 3 a.m. many nights. Yeah. And she, Show them your Amen. hat. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, I'm going to call up Delisha. Alicia and I spent all of last summer together in the Learning Lab, and the Learning Lab uh, and OA last summer was a very warm place <coughs> without water. <laughs> uh, so we worked very hard under some pretty rough conditions, and Delisha made it through the summer, came back for a little bit in September. Yeah. Delisha, you your quiet confidence is going to take you far in this world. Continue to be confident in yourself and pursue your passions and your dreams, and you're going places. Congratulations. Just want to say welcome to everybody and it's great turnout. And we're all proud of your sons and daughters today. Um, first thing I want to say is that uh, congratulations to all our graduates. And I hope uh, those of you that aren't going on to college, if you're going to stay in our community and work here, I hope we'll also volunteer in our community help, to help our young people in Hoyle. I want to look over to my left here, it would be your right, to these two fine young Puerto Rican men. I'm a little bit older than them, and one of my sons went to school with Anthony, and I know Josh, I've known him for a few years now, and I see them volunteer um, in the Hoyoke Safe, Neighborhood, Hoyoke Safe Neighborhood Association at the YMCA every Friday night. And we should all be proud that they're not, o not only great leaders, but um, great role models for the people in our community. And everyone here behind me, you have two great young men to look up to as you look forward if you're going to stay in, stay in the city. And I should say that I think me and PJ are the only ones on the staff that were born in Hoyoke. We think we're real, true Hoyokers and seen a lot of changes, but I want to say this. Josh Garcia was the first Puerto Rican mayor elected in the city of Hoyoke, in the city of history of, history of Hoyoke. And he was born here, I know that. I got the mic, Mr. Mayor. Excuse me for a second, okay? Melvin, give me a minute, okay? I'm glad Melvin is graduating. He would come into my room every single god darn day this year, even when he wasn't in my class or anything. And good luck to you. All right? <laughs> I love you, but 
I want to get new kids in next year, okay? <laughs> so I'm here to talk about um, first Axel Miguel Pato Rodriguez. So Axel came to us this year, and I was fortunate to have him in two classes, Integrated Literacy and a class that we call, an elective called Hoops in Life. And um, Axel's a big guy, right? And most of the time when you have new students coming in, um, they really don't op open up to you. Sometimes not for the whole year, you know, you're always trying to crack that safe and get, get inside and stuff like that. But I, uh, I heard some people that came up before me saying, you know, this person's quiet and reserved. He's not quiet and reserved. I'm not gonna say nice things about him like that. He's aggressive, never stops talking like me, so that's probably why we got along. And he's, he's just a, he's a real great guy. Um, I think sometimes he, he wants to act tough, Mr. Tough Guy, you know, be bravado or Borico or whatever. And I'm like, you don't scare me, you know what I mean? We're gonna get along, you're gonna to listen to me. And he came to school every day. He didn't miss either of my classes, the first four cycles. I was criticized for giving him an enormous amount of credits by Danielle Razon, who's in the back there not listening. But um, no, he came and I was looking at his notebook the other day. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was so organized uh, in his notebook, very neat and detailed. Um, and, and, I'm sorry to say this, but you don't usually see guys that write like that. They're the young men that are such neat writing, it's usually the girls. But I, I was happy to have him. Um, he participated in class all the time. Of course, he's in love. I know that. Is your girlfriend here? No. Or, and, but he would be on his phone, which is customary sometimes, and they'd always say, you know, you can put that away. You can spend the rest of your life with her, but you, she's not going to want to marry you if you don't have a high school diploma. So, yeah. good for you. Yeah. That's it. No, I'm not done. Danielle said we have more time available because everybody went so fast. Um, so anyhow, we go down to the boys' club every Monday with Zach, a couple girls, a few other guys, play basketball. It's part of the Hoops for Life class, and he was... Uh, didn't learn anything, anything from me. I'm embarrassed, Steve, after 30 years of coaching basketball. He could barely shoot outside to 10 to 12 feet. And he tried to shoot like 300 three-pointers or, you know, when we were down there every, every Monday and maybe made three or four. So I want to congratulate you on finally making it. Work on your three-point shot. opening up a barber shop in three years. That's what he told me. And me and Jerry and Saeed will be his first, the first people at his new shop, okay? Congratulations. Good luck. Here's the other person. There's another one? Yes. Timberley. And in all of that, what Coach forgot, Axel, is your mod CD came in. So that's your full diploma, Axel. Second up to bat here, Kim Rui Morales Rodriguez. Good morning, Kimberly. I didn't see you come in earlier. Um, Kimberly is the sweetest person on this planet. And I've had a lot of students in 30 years, okay? She really is. She's the sweetest person in the world. Very shy person. Um, it took a while for her, unlike Axel, it took a while for her to open up and stuff like that. But we finally had something in common while we were talking about sports one day. And, She's really into race car driving because her father is a, a racer, right? And um, she travels all over the East Coast with him, um, learning all about cars and stuff like that. In class, she did her work all the time, always was done early, 
but I appreciated your effort, you know, and you were genuinely concerned about graduating from high school, and I appreciate that. Always had a, has had a gorgeous personality for as long as I've known her. Uh, she wants to maybe follow in her father's footsteps, maybe she'll go into cosmetology, but um, look, look out Danica Patrick. Hey, right, look out, Dana Kirkpatrick. Kimberly Morales is in your rear view mirror. I love you, I congratulate you, and I'm so proud of you, and to Eres La Mejor, mi amiga. That's it, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, sorry everyone, I messed up. <laughs> so, I forgot one very special young woman who has a very special certificate. So, Omari. <laughs> Omari was motivated by her desire to succeed to finish high school. Omari is an exceptional young woman who, Danielle said this was a little bit like the NBA draft when we have to fight for students. You know, like I had to fight to put my name next to Omari <laughs> to speak for her at graduation. Her de determination to finish never wavered. She had her eye on the finish line the entire time. The chance to spend more time with her baby boy and to finish off high school as soon as possible to be able to spend that time with him drove her there. She will continue to push Johan yeah. and she will continue to find support and I know that you're going to stay in this community because this is the community that you belong in and love. We wish you the best of luck. Everybody. Um, can we just get one more round of applause for Jim, Coach Jim up here, Coach Humphrey? Um, he goes by Jim, but I call him sometimes, I call him James Earl Holbert. Um, he he's really long-winded and gives good stories, so I want him to, um, to go for my biopic. I need him to be the, um, the person that gives the information. Sam Jackson's a little expensive. Um, but today I want to introduce somebody that's really special to us, um, somebody that exemplifies what it means to be a student at OA. Um, throughout his time here, he's definitely dabbled in different career paths and explored his different things that he's interested in after OA. Um, he's gotten that first-hand experience while he was here. Um, you actually might know him. He's um, pretty famous. He's from a Holyoke um, sitcom. It's a telenovela. It's called um, Confessiones de Holyoke. It's a new show. It's going to be coming out soon. Um, Jordan Torres. So Jordan has traveled, he's um, dabbled in the culinary program here in Holyoke. Um, he's aspiring to be a chef and amongst other things. Um, one thing I always appreciated about Jordan is that he's never afraid to like really go after the things he's really passionate about. Um, whether it be traveling, whether it be trying something new that might be out of his comfort zone. Um, Jordan definitely does his best to make sure that he puts his best foot forward, um, regardless of his lack of sleep, to make sure that he's, he's here and, and ready to do his thing. And we've also, we also learned this year that laptops are not pillows. That's, that was like our biggest lesson. Um, yeah, I think that's actually, I think that's my brother. Hey, you gotta get the Oscar. Um, by the way, his new novella is gonna be up for an Oscar soon, so make sure you vote for him. Hello. Um, I have the pleasure of speaking on behalf of Evie. So Evie, come on up. Where's your family? Is this your family? Okay. Hi, family. Um, so this is Evie, and um, I remember when she was shadowing away, she was trying to make a decision of what school she was coming to and I had Jeffrey bring her into an SEL class. 
And it was a little hectic that day. And I remember saying, like, Evie, it's not always like this in here. And she was like, whatever, this is nothing compared to what I came from. So we knew right there she was going to choose OA, and it was a beautiful fit. Um, so about three weeks in, you came to me and said, Lauren, like, nothing against OA, I really like it here, but I got to get out of here. Like, I got to graduate, and I want to do it this year. Is there any way I can do that? So again, it's my first year here, and I said, I'm pretty sure there have been students who've done that. Let's go talk to Chris. Let's go find out. So we did so. We looked at her credits, and Evie came up with a plan. Um, uh, we, we, yeah, we looked at credits and determined this could be done. We all warned you, you needed to grind and really focus. As soon as you heard this was possible, you demonstrated a fierce determination and made a plan to make it happen. Every day after that, you came in with a goal of what you would accomplish that day, that week, etc., so that she could finish her credits by June 19th. And you did it. And you did it pretty Woo! seamlessly. So I have no doubt in my mind that you'll show this same determination as you move on from high school and start your next chapter. As you did at OA, you've already mapped out a solid plan of what you want for a career, and you've already developed a realistic and cohesive plan of how you're going to get there. And uh, you've already taken action to network and connect with people who can inspire and support your vision. And she's going to be a doula, everybody. Uh, uh, so I'm so excited for what comes next, and it, now is your time to go out and show the world what you have to offer. My advice to you is to stay real and authentic, and don't let anyone's opinions or actions get in the way of your success and happiness. Keep going for what you want, and don't settle for anything less because you're deserving of whatever you manifest for yourself. You will always have a family here at OA, so you better come back and visit, because we'll miss you, even Jerry will miss you. <laughs> All right, congratulations, we love you. Here you go. Congratulations. Hello, everyone. Um, I have the honor of presenting a diploma to Nasaya. So what I love and, and admire about Nasai is that not only can she paint, draw, crochet, do theater, sing, and bake amazing upside down pineapple cakes, but that she is a natural reader and she has a deep passion for learning. Um, she always went above and beyond in her classwork assignments, went to every school field trip she could, and since graduating, she has participated in several student showcases to share her work and experience at Opportunity Academy with other schools and community partners. And Asai, you're just the most kind, funny, artistic, and amazing person who knows how to rock her five-inch heels, <laughs> and I wish you the best of luck in your college classes this fall, and I know that you will do amazing things. Congratulations. <laughs> Nicole, Sam, if you want to come up and wait in the wings, that would be great. Hi, this first one is for Krista Hanneberry. Krista, if you could come up. started with us in December 2021. She was unsure of our school and especially unsure of math classes. She took a variety of classes and excelled at all. She was also one of those students that we had to make sure there was extra work to keep her going. Um, she didn't like math, but despite not liking math, she ended up earning 17.5 math credits with her time. Um, but my favorite memory of Krista was we took a chairlift up to Berkshire East and we did a renewable energy tour. And we were both scared. We did it. We did the mountain coaster, unlike Jerry, right? No, sorry, Jerry, right? I, pro I promise that's not a diss, right? Um, 
But she, she did it, she had fun, I think. And this shows her determination, her ability to push through obstacles. Krista plans to study psychology um, and will be an amazing counselor one day. She is one of the sweetest, kindest, confident souls that I've ever met. And I look forward to joining her on her journey in the future. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, the next person is Kiara Ruiz. <laughs> Kiara Ruiz also started with us in 2021, and I had the privilege of teaching her mom, and her mom earned her GED through our program. Um, she is someone, when she puts her mind to something, she makes it happen. And prior to her being up here on stage and advocating for being the, the speaker, she was uh, the cheerleader for Dana. And so now it's her time to shine, and I'm really yes. proud of her and all that she's going to accomplish. Congratulations, Kiara. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hello, hello. Um, working at OA as a teacher, staff member, um, you have daily gratitude. Um, gratitude for your coworkers and gratitude for your students. Um, and I want to talk about two students. The first one I'd like to talk about is Raziel. Yeah. Um, I, am, I am grateful for Raziel. Raziel would brighten up my day. He's a leader in the classroom. You might not know it. I mean, you know. You, you know. He's a leader in the classroom. Um, he would encourage students to do work. He would not get distracted by his friends. And he also encouraged his friends um, along the same path as him. I'm very proud of you. I'm grateful to have crossed paths with you. Thanks, Raziel. <laughs> Uh, the next student uh, is one Michael Rivera. Uh, come up, Michael Rivera. Another student I am grateful to have crossed paths with. Michael very often, yeah, hands up. And, very serious and very when in class. Um, always anxious to get his work, um, and then um, persevere through doing his work. Uh, I wasn't sure, I don't know what got you going, but Michael made incredible uh, gains in the last few months. I'm very proud of him, and I wish him all the best, and I'm grateful for you. We have one final student. If you'll join us on the floor, Brian. Yes, Blessings to you all, my friends. Appreciate you all being here today. Celebrating a very special class. Yeah. My man, Brian.